Hey, it's Mike Moore. I've got another progress slash development log to show off today. Now, I've been made aware that my last few videos have been a bit unstructured. So we, you and I, dear viewer, are gonna have to change that. So, the themes of today's video are going to be structure, order, lists, and bullet points. Number one. I removed the blur in the background of the main menu, courtesy of Aiden Nickel, who requested it. Uh, his profile link will be put in the description. Also, for any requests I decide on doing, I'll do the same. I'll show the comment and I'll put a link in the description. So if you have any requests or ideas, just shove them down in that comment section. You know what I'm saying. Um, I don't think any of this was here when I showed you all, showed this the last time. So if you notice, I, I do go to the options and it, uh, it moves the camera around, customize mech. It uh, moves the camera over to the little mech, which brings us to number two. <laughs> You can now customize your mech in the main menu. This allows you to change your colors, your weapons, and, uh, well, nothing else right now, but there'll be more there later. Uh, which will be nice welcome news for those of you who are, uh, early Patreon supporters. Because, you know, you couldn't do that before. You could only change... You, could, you had to go with the default colors and you could only use the one weapon, but now you can use all of them! You can use all the weapons, and it saves it on your computer, so when you close the game and open it back up, it's there! You, get, you can use your same settings. So that's cool. Um, we'll go back, and, uh, gonna take this straight into number three! There are two enemies now. Frago, who is a grenade with legs, and, uh, the heavy spider mech. This is the heavy spider mech. When you get up close to him, he does that. He just kind of, like, shoots bullets in an arc, which forces you to either use your shield or your dodge to get away from them. So that's pretty cool. Um, and hold on, I'll find a Frago here. Frago runs up to you, and jumps and explodes, and sends out shrapnel, so that's pretty cool. Number four! There's a new shield now, the bubble shield. When enemies walk up to you and hit you, it sends off little sparks. When you hit the offensive button, it pops up and shoves enemies away. That's pretty neat. It sends off she- it uses up energy when, uh, when stuff hits you. More energy than the other shield does, so if you're better at blocking, then you should probably use the smaller shield. But if you just want a button to defend you and send you into invincibility mode for a little bit, use the big shield. But, uh, but yeah, that's, that's the abilities right now. There's also a new offensive ability. You got a big laser, it's a big fucking laser. It's got no sound effects right now, but it's, it's cool, it's a laser, it's pretty fun. Oh my god, my dude, cool. it's plugged in. It's, it's not fucking working. Number five? All the weapons are working now. If you recall in the last video, none of them were working, and that's because I was changing them and making them all modular. So now, shotgun works. Flintor works. And the minigun works. And the minigun is also now a little more minigunny. It's not super accurate and it shoots a lot faster. Soon I'll have a new LMG type weapon that's more accurate and the minigun will do more damage than it, but uh, it's it's not as accurate, so. Harder to hit things, but uh, it's good in the horde mode weapon, so. That'll be like your starter weapon, the assault rifle or the minigun or whatever. Number six. I fixed the spawning of enemies, so it's actually spawning rare enemies, uncommon enemies, and common enemies at the rate it should be. It uh, Before it was just selecting a number between one and three and spawning an enemy, depending on when it selected. But now it selects a float between one and three. No rambling, oh, the Jesus theme of today is structure! Is structure. <laughs> Number seven. Now it's time to talk stages. Now, the thing that made this video take so long wasn't me making new abilities or changing the enemies or making new enemies or any any of the things I've shown to you previously. It was trying to find a stage that I thought was acceptable to show you guys. Now, a lot of the stages I've made are like pretty okay, they're pretty neat, but they're just so arena-y and they just don't fit in with the style of game I want to make. That's why I didn't want to use this map. Like, it's good for testing. It's nice and big. It's got nice and open, nice open areas. Maybe I'll make a few maps like this, like Gladiator Arena sort of things, or like a paintball arena. But the main idea I wanted to make was something that would feel like a world. So I ditched this idea and I went into a couple other ideas. Somebody started sending me grid layouts for maps and I made one of those into a map and you can see that here. Now this sort of sa suffers from the same issue that the other map did. It just It's just too arena-y. Obviously these wouldn't be the final textures. This is just like a default. But uh, but yeah, it's just, it's just so much of an arena. It suffers from the same problem. So my third idea was that I would 
make a forest, like a low poly forest. And I don't know what happened with that. I guess I just got disenfranchised with it. Maybe I'll go back to it later. But um, my final solution was just not to make maps. Instead, I would let the game make the maps. So instead of whipping something up in Blender, I made a randomly generated city. So this is the map when you first load it up. There's absolutely nothing in here, just this little plate to base everything off and spawn everything on. And once you start the game, this is the map. This is it. This is all randomly generated. This is all the same area that you just saw. And uh, everything spawns in here. You can see enemies are spawning. Um, soon, I will be changing the enemy spawning algorithm so they all not algorithm, but the, the spawning code, so they spawn in a circle around you instead of having like set spawn points, which is how it works now. Uh, it's just a placeholder. And I'll fly around the map a little bit to show you what it looks like not in a top-down view. So here it is, it's very pastel, it looks kind of like, it's got like kind of a modern Newfoundland feel, and that's pretty neat. So all the buildings are very pastel and brightly colored. Uh, as you can see, everything is in a 3x3 three three grid, so it's very uniform looking, even though the buildings are all changed around and th there's a lot of variation in the buildings, not a lot, but you know what I mean. Um, there's, it's just not super varied feeling, right? So this would get boring pretty quick to play in, because it's just like you're walking in squares and that's it. You can go into these alleyways and stuff and go into the backs, but that's that's not enough, right? So eventually I'll have it so there are more than 3x3 three three buildings, like 1x1 one one buildings in the 3x3 three three square. I'll have like one building, one big building maybe, or maybe I'm moving my hands around. You can't see me moving my hands around, but pretend I'm like making accordion gestures with my hands. Um, I would have a square that's maybe like a 7x3, so it's got like one big long building or like a strip mall or something like that. I just, I've already got that working, I just don't have the models in Blender made for it yet. So I wanted to push this out because this is neat, this is working. And the previous video that you saw, uh, I just had that tiny little test map and that sucked. And uh, I mentioned in the beginning of the video that I have a Patreon page and anybody that donates to the Patreon page gets access to the game early. And all those people that were paying like real money to me were just playing that shitty tiny test map. And that sucks, right? Like you can't do anything in there. You can't accurately dodge or test the play gameplay of anything. And that's kind of like crappy, right? So, so now I've got this big neat map. Uh, I get to show off some of my models. Buildings are really fun to make. I've got this cool method for like pumping out buildings and they just, oh, they look so nice. I love them. But uh, anyway, yeah, so now people have something that they can play. So that's cool. Now the bottleneck for this, of course, is things that you can go inside of. If you're in a top-down camera view, if you go up to something like this, the camera either like clips through whatever you're looking at and it looks really fucking janky and broken, or the camera goes closer to you and that just looks bad. If you make the camera go up really close, you can't see anything around you in top-down, so that's bad. So what I want to do is make it so everything in the area of the camera that you can see, like in a cone, just becomes invisible when you go into a building. Like, let's say you go into a parking garage in one of these squares. Uh, the, the building around you would become invisible, but the parking garage itself would stay visible while you're in there fighting stuff. The easy thing to do would just be moving the camera closer to the player. But I don't know if you've picked up on this. Here at Games More Incorporated Industries Gamesville, we don't do things the easy way. We do things the fun way. Man, it's just so cool. Like, look at this. I've generated a city. It's awesome. I love it. Maybe what I'll do with the low poly forest is have the low poly forest generated as well, uh, randomly. That'd be super neat. If you have any suggestions for things I could do or little idle animations for the enemies or things I should add, new stages, that kind of thing, uh, leave them in the comment section of the video. I do read all the comments, even the horrible ones, so pop them down there and rest assured if you insult my cat, I will be a little bit more dead inside, so thanks, thanks for that.
Number 8, yeah, but you thought, thought you were done, done with this, this, didn't you? My phone? Check out my Twitter where you can see constant status updates while I'm not dead inside. I totally understand how to use it. I have a subreddit that I don't even use, so don't even bother with that shit. It's not that bad. Smash that like button. God, so cringy. Check out my Google Poly profile where you can see some of the models I've made. It's a pretty neat website. Sacrifice a small animal in my name. Please do not do that. Like, comment, and subscribe. No. Hit that bell. It's really not necessary. Check out my MySpace. What even is that? And most importantly, have a wonderful goddamn day. Yeah.